Biobalance HealthCast, episode 165, Nutrition Balance and Why It's Important. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast. Last uh, time we met, Kathy and I were talking about the, the process of aging, which is something we spend a lot of time talking about. And we were talking particularly about the causes of aging. And in that podcast, we talked about the decline of hormones, the oxidative stress, the toxin overload. And we said we wanted to come back and spend some time talking specifically about the, the last on the, the list. There were uh, four items on the list. And the last item on the list was uh, lack of nutrients. And the reason that we want to spend time talking about it is to, to make a specific point. And the specific point is that when you take uh, polypharmaceuticals, when you take a lot of medicines, or when you just take some medicines, those medicines are taken to, to deal with a particular issue or symptomology that your body has. And so they are key to address that symptom. But there is a side effect of that that there's a nutritional deficit that is caused. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a blockage of something or a decline of something or a change in something that throws the balancing mechanism off. And, and what Kathy keeps reminding me of in, in with her information is what a delicate orchestrated balancing system the human system is. Mm -hmm. and, and those of us that are not trained to this, I, I mean, I am awed by that. I mean, the, the mm -hmm. specific information that you have, this is, well, but if you tweak this, then this gets out of whack. So you have to mm -hmm. tweak this. And, and you keep bringing it back to me globally to say you have to, you have to pay attention. And my comment That's to it. that is to most <laughs> men won't do that. I don't pay enough attention, and I think I'm more literate in this area mm -hmm. than many men are. Uh, but I still resist and resent having to pay attention to some of this stuff. It's a psychological block. I say, are you on CoQ10? And you go, I don't know, ask my wife. Exactly. That's exactly right. I don't know. <laughs> it's a know. psychological block. I, mean, I don't a know. A lot of guys need wives and daughters to keep track of all the things and that, they and need. And that's to, okay. I'll, I'll well, talk to Well, it's very Phyllis sexist and ignorant and stupid. But we do but, things that we yeah. need to be taken care of as well. And you've divided up yeah. your uh, duties. Role of responsibility. Right. Yeah. And so that's I take okay. care of the, the you know grass and she takes care of the medicine I'm supposed to take. Right. Yeah, right. But, I think, but I think it's important to know that you know, you go to the doctor for a problem. The yeah. doctor gives you a medication for that problem, and it's effective, which is great. Yeah. But then down the line, you don't feel well. Down the line, something else happens. You never really relate it to the medicine. Right. Nutrients take a long time to become depleted. So if you had plenty of magnesium, and then you take a medication that depletes your magnesium, and you don't add back to it, then down the line, it slowly goes away. It's kind of like the leaching out of you, the soil yeah. of the nutrients. And then you go, oh, I'm so tired. I have muscle spasms. I, I can't relax and go to sleep. Right. You're low on magnesium. And you don't make the connection to dot the dots. Because it takes to, a while. To, to say it does take a while, but it's also the last time you went to the doctor, it was because you were having stomach pains. Well, you're not having stomach pains anymore. But what you don't know is that the medicine that you took for the stomach pains, or, or the ulcer, say, mm -hmm. has caused this additional imbalance to get skewed. Right. I mean, it was very much like a conversation we were having earlier this week. Uh, you were talking about people that come into your office for hormone replacement, mm -hmm. and that they come in with all this presenting symptomology, they get their hormones replaced, and if they have any other issue that occurs, they say it was caused by the hormone replacement. Right. Like, it's like, oh my God, that caused to me to have. I got this. a virus. It must have been. It, it must, must have been, been, this. been this. But the flip side is, they never come in and say, because I have had this hormone replacement, I no longer have this going on. You know. Right. I have it, to ask them specifically. So, Oftentimes they'll say, I'll, I'll put them on hormones. They haven't been able to lose weight in the last ten years. Okay. Not one ounce, right. or it goes no off, matter it comes what they've right done, back. They can't take it off. So right. I put them on testosterone for the men, or testosterone and estradiol for the women, and I also do a few management things with their diet or their nutrition. Yeah, and they Lock come back the in four in four months, and they say, you know, you know, doc, this is the most amazing thing. I went on this low something diet, and I lost twenty five pounds yeah. in four months. Yeah. 
And, and I'm like, yeah, but that never would have happened had you not been on the hormones. And that's the missing link. That's the connection that they don't make. Right. At they least go, they don't oh, make. Oh, it must have been this great diet. Yes. But you have to think, well, what and made how that? How many great diets did they try before that didn't work? Right. It, but it's not that just that great diet. It's the it's that getting your yeah. hormones balanced, getting your nutrients balanced, right. getting your life balanced, makes it possible for you to actually get healthier and get more and and lose weight. And so that requires paying attention. Yeah, and it requires realizing what really did the trick because if you if you don't draw the line, right. if you don't go from A to B, then your whole life you're gonna say, well, it was that diet, but that diet doesn't work for me anymore. You won't go back and make sure your hormones are balanced. You'll use the wrong treatment for the right outcome. We were all at a convention recently and uh, Kathy asked me something about what are you taking for this or that or the other? And my wife was sitting there, and she started laughing hysterically, and she said, <laughs> he doesn't know. He just puts things in the pill box that you've given him to take, and, because you told him to take it. You know, so if you gave <laughs> him I, cyanide, I, I guess that'd be... But I've never given you something to take without explaining it. Well, I know, but I don't pay attention. Okay. I think, again, most men don't. You, you, have, mm -hmm. you have initial opportunity to get my attention mm -hmm. and say, oh, this is a concern. And if you do this, the concern will be ameliorated. I'm like, okay, because I trust you. Mm -hmm. And I don't require myself to retain that data. I just remember I'm supposed to. I think I'm doing well to remember yeah, to I'm remember supposed it. to take the That's pill. That's really good. Uh, or the tablet or whatever it is. Uh, but not why. But now why? Exactly. Mm -hmm. If I have the good source of information, then that's enough. But you yourself have made unbelievable cr progress. <laughs> so, the whole, so the whole goal really is to get healthier so you don't need a lot of right. medicines. Right, right. You no longer use a blood pressure medicine. Well, I'm, I'm literally down to one medicine. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, and I was a, on multiple medicines. A cholesterol medicines. medicine. Yeah. I mean, you've lost weight. You exercise every day. I mean, it's a completely different type of environment for because your body. I pay attention globally. To what you're supposed to do. Globally, but, but not, not specifically. Yeah. yeah. And and I think I'm not atypical for men. I mean, mm -hmm. women that I talk to about this, they know all these things. They know, you know, they know every disease their children have had and when they got their shots and what their grandmother took and why she took it. You just <laughs> seem to absorb that data. There's a category mm -hmm. in your minds that that isn't turned on in mind. If it's in mind, it's not turned By on. By the way, you've got a computer. I know that since we we're writing the book together. Right, right. <laughs> if you would just write your whole <laughs> history down, every time something new happens, go on or off a of medication, you go, Psh, date, no longer on blank, you know, or take it off your med list. Oh, my God. It yeah. would be so easy. It, I mean, that is so You are so, so easy. right, and I saw that happen when my, when my mother, my mother, <laughs> that's Freudian, when my wife... <laughs> That is Freudian. <laughs> I'm going like to be in big trouble this. <laughs> when my wife was taking care of her grandmother as her grandmother mm -hmm. was dying, she lived with us and she died at home with us. But Phyllis had a computer spreadsheet that she kept of every single dose of everything that mm -hmm. Adele was taking. And as the doctors or nurses made changes, Phyllis would update that stuff. And the hospitals and the doctors were so appreciative and so surprised because she just whip out this little list and say, well, here's, you know, we check her in the hospital and they say, well, what's she taking? Fills the hand list. And they'd be like, oh my God, we've never seen anybody do this. And that's so awesome. So it is doable. That's due to Phyllis. Yeah. That's oh, only due to the fact that she's, yeah. and she's that's very the way, compulsive and she's very, she checks all, all, very compulsive. all the eye, you know, yeah, the eyes and the teeth. That, you know, I mean, she's really good at detail. So. So A, I need to learn to do that, or B, I just need to really make her happy and let her continue doing it for me. <laughs> There's some psychology I'll choose here. B. Yeah, I know you will. <laughs> but we're talking about all of this here yeah. today, and we would like you to pay attention or have your spouse pay attention. Right. Some of these ideas that we give you, like write your history on a couple pieces of paper when you go into your doctor, so your doctor doesn't have to ask you all those questions, especially right. a new doctor. Right. Uh, or a specialist doesn't have to a think about asking the questions that are already there. Then they can ask the really important questions that might have been on your second visit. You can right. save yourself a visit. Yeah. Because they can get through more if it's on a page. Which is why you ask people to fill out all the paperwork before right. they come in. Right. So and, that, and a and lot of doctors do that now. It's also why I do blood work before I ever see a patient. Yeah. First of all, that saves them a visit if they're not a candidate for pellets or for hormone replacement, and they send me their history and their lab work and they don't need what I offer, mm -hmm. then I don't see them. 
Now, sometimes people say, I still want to come in and talk about my diet or whatever, and we'll do that. But in general, my my goal is they management have more through hormone issues. replacement. Yeah. It, and so I, I save them a visit. Right. I get the blood work first. I, I evaluate everything so they don't have an unnecessary charge or visit. Mm -hmm. So then when they come in, I've got their history. I've got their lab work. And we can get down to how did this all happen? And here's what I found. And this is what your lab work means so that we don't waste any time. Mm -hmm. So in, in today's talk, basically, Something you have to know is, and I'm not sure that every physician knows this. I, I went 29 years and not didn't know this. Dr. De Silva at the AMMG conference gave us a very detailed list of each nutrient that is used up too quickly or is becomes a deficit in patients taking certain drugs. Okay. So one of them, one of the Drugs. And, and we'll post this, by the way, on, right, so on the website. To, like, so you, you'll have to go to the website to get it, but it'll, the, this checklist will be posted. Right, we'll have it on our, our blog mm -hmm. as well. So if you're taking a beta blocker for blood pressure, mm -hmm. if you're taking, uh, that's like metaprolol, one of the alls. <laughs> if you're taking a statin for cholesterol, if you're taking an antidepressant, or if you're taking metformin for prediabetes or diabetes, you should also be taking CoQ10 because it uses it up. So here we're giving you a, a, a drug for your cholesterol, but we're taking away the enzyme and the nutrient that you need to actually process it and get it out of your system. So CoQ10, that's C-O space Q, Q space 10. 10 right. It's not like a French word. Right, that's right. <laughs> it's not a French word. And it's, you can find, you're right, I forget that not everybody knows how, it, how to spell it, but I've, I mean, you can get these at Sam's, at mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like this is something in short, short um, demand. I mean, everybody is cognizant of what it can do. Mm -hmm. People even not on statins that have high, high cholesterol should take, should take the CoQ10. <laughs> well, it's like the lutens that you need to take for your eyes for macular degeneration. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you remember that one. I did remember that one, but I got to pull that out of there. And iodine, because we live in an iodine sink. Mm -hmm. and, but those are things that you can get at most big box stores. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can and you and in general with the CoQ10 unless you have a huge problem and you need a very high dose, 100 milligrams is what you need. That's what I take. Mm -hmm. Now, and I'm only on one of these drugs. Yeah. So, I take it because of the depletion. So, I don't want to have I don't want to have a depletion in my CoQ in my excuse me, in my CoQ10. So, if you look at everybody's on diuretics and I'm not this is the only one that is is a uh, not considered an issue with this for this deficiency is spironolactone, which I give to a lot of people so that women don't get facial hair. But all the other diuretics mm -hmm. are they they just pull nutrients out of your system. Yeah, they pull salt out of your system, and that's why we take them because right. we're decreasing the salt and decreasing and water goes out with them. That's why we call them diuretics. It should be. Salt, salt uretics or you know, yeah. sodium uretics. But, but they pull electrolytes and everything they else They pull a lot of them. other things yeah. out. And one of the things that's very important is magnesium. And magnesium isn't something that we get in processed foods. So everybody's eating processed foods, fast foods. Magnesium is something that most Americans, 70% of Americans, are deficient in. So magnesium is, it's a mineral. It should be taken 500 to 1,000 milligrams a day. And it is, it's wonderful. It relaxes your muscles at night so you don't have muscle spasms. It helps you sleep. It's a very calming um, nutrient for your brain. And so if you're taking a diuretic, you, don't have, you have less than everybody else. What? I had a commercial flash to my head. It was an underarm deodorant, and they, it was a powder. And they, I think they called it magnesium hexachloric. Aluminum. Aluminum hexachloric? Okay, then. That's... That's why I stopped because I wasn't sure. And you don't want to use those either because well, that's aluminum that toxicity. would absorb directly. Mm -mm, no. They'll, okay. It won't. All right. You have to ingest You it. actually have to take it as a pill. Okay. And all those of you who have constipation, it helps constipation too. Mm -hmm. So that plus thyroid helps your constipation, but one or the other or both. Okay. So diuretics are hydrochlorothiazide or maxide. Uh, so those are the two most common um, 
Lasix is, a, is huge, I mean, but that's only if you're really sick. I'm not suggesting that you don't take these medications. I'm suggesting that you actually balance out what you're missing. And you don't need to replace your sodium, but it, potassium goes out with it. You may need some extra potassium mm -hmm. and you need some more magnesium. Also zinc, which is a very small um, mineral, but you need your zinc as well. But Lasix is more like for congestive heart failure. Oh yeah, it's, to, to it's a huge diuretic. It's yeah. not something that you- That you just take every you just day. Take yeah. For uh, for no reason, you have to be pretty sick to take Lasix. Yeah. But it does the same thing. Right. It gets rid of so many of yeah, these, it and it flushes in, the system, and in a big way. Right. So that's so that's the diuretics that that we want you to be looking at and replacing your um, replacing your nutrients. The other you've probably heard the term NSAIDs. That means non-steroidal um, anti-inflammatories. So. That's Motrin, Aleve, it's all over the counter. All of those, those can make you deficient in folic acid, which is folic means fo fo foliage, anything green. So folic acid comes in anything green, so kale and all those things that we are putting into our diet. Vitamin C, mm -hmm. uh, zinc, and last one is, is amino acids, which is a protein. So you can be deficient in those even if you're eating them. So you have to you have to you can't double really up. Because you eat enough to get like a greens. You're not going to eat enough kale or spinach right. to get. You're going to eat a normal daily dose, and you're still not going to absorb enough because of the of the NSAIDs, the Motrin. Aleve because of the negative. You eat the normal daily dose. Okay, that's the recommended daily dosage that they show right. in all the packages. Yes. But if you're taking a medicine that depletes that anyway, mm -hmm. then there's an aggressive drawdown. Right. So you need to balance. You that. need to balance it. So you need to take and, and mostly, except for the amino acids, most multivitamins would have all of this in it, so mm -hmm. you need to add a multivitamin. And again, the checklist for that That's will be... That's anywhere. I, again, my point to Kathy as we were planning this talk is I don't think most men will comfortably like hold a handful of pills every day and say, oh my God, I'm gonna, I am gonna, have to, to swallow all this well, stuff. Well, I've convinced my husband Even, to do it. Well, but you have... <laughs> You have leverage over him that you don't have yes, over I, most right. of your patients. That's right. I don't have leverage over my patients. Uh, <laughs> but so what we were talking about is, you know, could we could we just begin the journey? Could we say it's important to start to balance? And if you wouldn't take an undefined number like a handful, <laughs> would you take two or three or four? And then how do you triage? What well, are we the take most handfuls of, of Aleve and Motrin, and we don't think anything about it. I don't. I don't take any of that stuff. And I, okay. and I know a lot of people that, that at least say they resist taking anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't because I don't want an ulcer, and I've had, I've had one. And, that, and it does That's your life's work, Kathy. You know ulcers. that stuff, and you live that stuff. I know. <laughs> most but people that's have, why we're doing most these people have podcasts. real lives. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. And they go out. Really. And they, and, Thank and you men. very much. And I think about everything I eat. You do. Yeah. You should, you do. I should be really skinny. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's nutrition. And, and nutrition. And it's balance. You think, you think about what oil you put in your car. You think about what, I mean, anything I that agree. you love, yeah. you think about what you run it with. It's, it's important to it's you. It's categories of focused attention. And so you Your are, body should be your biggest focus. It should be. You're not getting another one. I, I hear you, and I am trying to listen <laughs> to you. I'm just explaining my challenge for that mm -hmm. and, and extrapolating that I think it's there, on that other there are other chromosome men. that we have that you don't have. That's got to be it. Because we listen to this stuff, and we actually I will say remember. to you what I say at home to my wife. Yes, dear, my <laughs> fault. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. I'm learning, and I'm trying to learn, and we're trying to help other people learn. That's right. So and it I does mean, make a difference. It shouldn't be your your obsessive thought all the time. Yeah. It should. You shouldn't obsess over this. You should just say, "Hmm, do I really need that to leave? Do I need to take three of them? Can yeah. I just take one of them? I mean, or." Should I just well, take yeah. my multivitamin to cover it? And and do I really need that leave because I'm carrying five pounds too much, or I haven't exercised? I don't walk uh, a mile a day mm -hmm. or twenty minutes. You That's know, why every... I wear my up band. So and we're going to know... do a podcast and talk about yeah. those. Yeah, yeah, we're going to talk about those because we all we both wear it, them. It tracks how your much movement. you walk. Uh, but so we're back to paying attention and looking at mm -hmm. balance. And one of the balancing aspects is. If you do balance, mm -hmm. you don't have to take a handful of stuff That's true. anymore. And you watch you, what you eat. And, and if you remove the medicines you don't really need, if you yes. go to your doctor and say, 
what can I do besides take this ulcer medication, which right. is our next is our next group of medications. Yes. So like Prilosec, many of these, if we take it because then we can eat all the acid food we want. Mm -hmm. We can eat hot food. We can eat stuff that's not necessarily great for us. Mm -hmm. So we're taking a medication so that we can eat something we probably shouldn't eat that irritates our stomach. Then we have to take nutrients to replace that. If we really thought it through, wouldn't it just be easier not to eat the hot foods? Well, a friend of mine, I make a spicy chili. And I like it, and I eat it, and doesn't, I don't have any of those reactions mm -hmm. to it. But a friend of mine was coming over for dinner, and they were like popping three or four pills so they could eat it. I was like, that doesn't make sense. And to what me. did I do when I came over for chili? Well, you brought, I brought sour cream. Yes, you can you put did. yogurt or sour cream on hot chili. Yeah. So that is a natural way of calming your to stomach smooth down the to smooth heat. down the heat. Yeah. So you can do stuff like that. That's on the internet. You can find those things that you can do. Now, I'm not talking to people who have had ulcers who have right. ulcers right. currently, and I wouldn't have anyone go off their ulcer medication without talking to their doctor about it. Or any medication. Or any medication. You, you, no, right. and so we're talking about informing yourself to have the conversation mm -hmm. with your physician, assuming you can catch one uh, and have five minutes with them to talk about these That's things. That's true. As opposed or, to the triage of emergency room medicine. Yeah, so let me just, last thing on the ulcer medication, what it does is it lowers the, the acid in your stomach and then you don't absorb your nutrients as well. It keeps you from getting an ulcer, but the acid's there for a reason. It's so that you can absorb your proteins and you can absorb your B12, your folic acid, your iron, your calcium, and your vitamin D. Right. So that's why it's acid. So when we give you a medicine to stop that, you may not even be absorbing the rest of your medication. So you should take oh, it at one time of the day mm -hmm. and all your other stuff, your nutrients, your medications, so if you're at on a an different ulcer time of the day. Medicine, you should take it in the morning or at night mm -hmm. and then take your nutritional supplements on the opposite and end of the day. And medications, because medications, medications usually need acid okay, to be to broken down, down and absorbed yeah. either in the stomach or small intestine. I've never had a doctor explain that to me before. I mean, I've had them say, take this in the morning, take this at night. But because they don't have time. Well, I mean, I have, I have a, a, I have, I mean, I was one of them. Yeah. You know, somebody, you know. Here, I, take it. Because I said so. <laughs> yeah. I would have people ask me questions and their list, they'd roll their list out. It would roll across the floor and yeah. I'd be like, I've got 20 minutes to do her pap smear breast exam and, and then I can't possibly get through this list. So yeah. I'd say, give me three. Give me right. three questions. Right. I can answer three of those mm -hmm. while we're doing everything else and as we're wrapping up and stuff like that. But. That's yeah. that's not in this type of medicine. No, I didn't mean to sound That's accusative. not possible. It, it is not. Doctors are doing their best. Yeah. And th this type of medicine is not making it easy. No. And it's not under their control. So, so ask pointed questions. Just say, you know, I'm taking ulcer medication, and should I take it at a different time? Should it be, at you, you know, or you can follow our directions and keep taking it, but just change when you take it. I think taking it at night for ulcer medications makes sense because yeah. that's when we get GERD and we we lie down. And, and our bellies are still full, and it goes up into our esophagus and makes us feel pain. May even change our voice. So the acid and the our acid full reflux, stomach. You yeah. So you have acid reflux, and that's and sometimes that's the only reason people take it. So if yeah. you take it before bed, it's easier. It's or, better for or you. Or sleep up, right? That's no fun. No, it's not fun at all. So that's so that's the kind of thing I want you to think about when you're taking a medicine. What does it? There's always something it does. Mm -hmm. it may not be a side effect. It just may be something that you can't see, that you don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But what should I do to counteract that? Okay. And so if you don't tend to think this way, or if you're like me, you're resistant to paying attention to those things, uh, you can triage it. And we'll post a list, and you mm -hmm. can look at what you're taking and what the deficits are. And so maybe you eat more bananas to get potassium, or maybe you take a potassium supplement. Mm -hmm. You can make decisions about that. But it does require, as you heard Kathy say to me over and over again, pay attention. you got to pay attention. And, and the goal is balance. The, the, most, the, the more balanced you can make your system, the less medicine and the less uh, supplements you're going to need altogether. So. We hope this helps you. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314 
888-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.